Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the fourth episode of the SOK podcast. Um, this is Pilot. I'll be the host of sorts for today's podcast. Um, can everyone go around and introduce themselves? Hello, I am Toa Sparta. I am Toa Forests. And I'm Toa Lavoris. Nice. So, um, today's today's podcast topic is kind of a uh, kind of a sad one. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, Greg Farshti's departure from the Lego Group, and um, sort of what that means for the Bonacle community as a whole, because. Um, there are some community developments that have spurred from this. Um, so to start, um, we're going to give a quick explanation of what has actually occurred. Um, and basically that is um, that Greg Farshti has been laid off from LEGO. Um, as far as I know, we don't know why this is the case. But um, this means that, you know, come, I believe, July of this year, he no longer will be working for the company. And, um, yeah, so all the projects that he's been working on for Lego, such as the different story themes and whatever, he no longer will be a part of. So, um, and you if, know, to start, sorry, Sparta. And ahead. a further explanation if, in case people are confused about, you know, he's laid off. So some people might assume that might be a temporary thing. No, there is such a thing as permanent layoff. So what that really entails is that, you know, Lego would like Greg out, but not maliciously. He was he was not fired, but the idea is Lego is ultimately saying like we no longer have a use for you. We you know, unfortunately, we have no more work for you, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's an important point. Is um like he hasn't just like you know left on like retirement. Like he was, you know, laid off from the company. So. You know, that is a uh, important distinction to make. And, um, you know, to, just to start, like, I kind of want us to just go around and sort of give our first reactions to, the, to this. Um, I know when I first saw it, um, you know, it was kind of just a reaction of shock because, you know, it's like, um, you know, Greg is like a part of so many different Lego themes, um, you know, because he's kind of like their main story guy, right? So I find it interesting how you know, they've, um, had to make the decision to get rid of him. Um, but yeah, what, what do you guys think? Well, you weren't kidding when today's topic was sad. I mean, come on, one of the, the heralds of the Bionicle storyline is gone. <laughs> but, but at the same time, I'm trusting Lego has, you know, their reasoning for it. And, you know, I mean, again, it's, it's sad. You know, I really wish that it didn't have to come to this, given that what we'll be talking about later, there's further implications to Greg leaving. Yeah. Like, I definitely, like, hope that Greg can find, you know, uh, like, employment somewhere else, you know? Like, that... I, hope he just, I hope he's doing okay. <laughs> oh, oh, there's there's no doubt in my mind he'll he'll be fine. Like, I wouldn't even be surprised to hear if he goes independent, so. Yeah, definitely. Before he, like, yeah, join, um, joins the Mega Constructs. <laughs> <laughs> joins the enemy side. <laughs> yeah. Um, Toph, how about you? What do you think? Well, honestly, I wasn't that surprised. He hasn't been doing much in the past few years, as far as, as I am ever. Since LEGO hasn't been doing that many books or comics uh, this uh, past few years in comparison with what they did during Bionicle's original run and even the early years of Ninjago and Jima and stuff. That's a good yeah, point. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't really kept up much on, like, Lego recently, but, um, you know, like, if they are not making as many, like, books and comics as they were before, I guess that would make sense. That, like, they wouldn't really need him anymore, right? Yeah. I don't think he has even made a book since like 2017 or 16 uh, when he, he wrote a Ninjago graphic novel. Uh, but I don't think he's done anything since. I think he's been working on like uh, what is like Lego magazine or whatever that is. 
Oh yeah, yeah. That was another thing too that Greg was a part of. Like, I'm like, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was like the editor for the Lego magazine too, right? Yeah, I believe yes. so. Yeah, wasn't he one of the head editors eventually? I think so. I think so. He was like, he he was like kind of up there in that, but yeah, which makes me kind of more sad because like I remember getting those in the mail like every couple months as a kid. Mm -hmm. It was always fun to look through those. But yeah, um, Leva, how about you? Do you have anything to add? Well, when I first saw like the post on Facebook where I browse most of the time, I was like, ah, oh, that's. They, they, they've done a bad in a sense i kind of feel because <laughs> obviously you know greg is the reason why a lot of us have invested in barnacle stories because you know you wrote the thing as uh and definitely barnacle was definitely centered around the story more than anything else so having him depart is kind of sad however i do, I do see it probably is going to be for the best there's definitely more stuff in the future that will like Obviously, him leaving Lego doesn't mean that he won't stop being part of the Barnacle community at large. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it will, he'll, he'll still be around. And, like, even if he makes more stuff for Barnacle, it might not be official, but, you know, it will still be there. And us fans will definitely keep it as official anyway, but like that. Yeah. Like, I, I think he still will have some form of connection to the community. But, you know, if he isn't working out Lego, that definitely, um, like, limits his overall influence on on the theme right which is you know what we'll get into in a bit here um but yeah so yeah so uh anything else you guys want to add or do you guys want to move on to the next point of discussion uh i believe maybe we should uh you know you know uh, briefly mention you know it's you know if he ever watches this just say thank you for all that you have done you know, yes, that's, that's a good point. Thank you. <laughs> and you're that... welcome anytime on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, but indeed, in all sincerity, thank you that, you know, what you have made for us has helped define us in an entire generation. That's a very good way to put it, Sparta. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess we can move on to talking about what this means for the Bonacle community. Um, we've been kind of alluding to this throughout the podcast so far. And, um, you know, like, as I mentioned a little bit ago, um, since Greg is no longer working at Lego, this very much limits his um, influence on the Bonacle community as a whole. Um, as you guys know, if you've been active in the community over the past few years, um, Greg recently has been involved in conducting canon contests, um, which have been primarily run by TTV and sort of, um, you know, he's been involved in that. And basically what these canon contests are, are, um, you know, an opportunity for members of the community to decide the appearances of characters who never received a set. So, um, you know, first in like 2020, we had a contest for Toa Helrick's. Uh, where we both decided that character's appearance as well as the design for her mask, the mask of psychometry. And then we also had one for Artaka later on, um, as well as most recently one for uh, the four remaining members of the Toahaga. Um, so, like, the only reason all those contests could take place were because um, of Greg still working at Lego. Um, you know, because those contests do affect the official canon story of Bionicle. Um, you know, the only reason Greg could still make alterations to that was because he's still working at Lego. Now that he isn't working at Lego, he no longer really has the authority necessarily to decide that stuff, which means that the canon contests um, have basically died <laughs> as a result of Greg leaving Lego. Um, so that's kind of the situation that the community is in right now. Um, we'll get into, well, later on, we'll get in more to, uh, you know, how that, um, like how, uh, the community is going to respond to that. But yeah, what, what are your guys's like initial reactions to that news? Not surprising. 
you know, and, you know, with, with Greg gone and given, like you said, the only connection to Lego for this was him. So, you know, so it was just part of the deep. It was just, I figured the next thing that would happen after hearing he was gone is no more cannon contest, which is sad because to my understanding, I thought, you know, there was, I thought there was going to be at least four more, if I remember correctly, from the original announcement. Because I know Hogwarts. There, there was were going to be, like, a lot more. Like, um, they, they never, like, officially announced this, but, like, after, you know, like, the news came out about Greg's departure, TTV released plans they had of like an entire another list of um characters they were gonna do contests for and yeah so there's like a lot that we're kind of missing out on now that you know the contests are ended Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is sad very sad yeah like it's it's kind of um it's a bit divisive because you know not everyone has really been a fan of the contests like entirely like i myself have not always been super fond of the idea just because, um, you know, I think it kind of limits creativity in some sense because, you know, while you can still create revamps of different characters and whatever, it I don't know. I just don't really see the point in doing that like 10 years after Bonacle's end. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, it definitely did, um, you know, kind of breathe some life into the community. So... Yeah, I guess that is a loss. (laughs) It did, but I know we've kind of talked about it before, but when the Hellrix contest was going on, and I'm sure many of us remember the dreaded Noodle Rix, you know. The amazing Memes aside. (laughs) That's another debate in itself. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, but at the same time, when something like that got as far as it did, that is definitely where I think a lot of people's opinions about this whole thing got soured. But at the same yeah. time, during the voting portions of all the <laughs> contests right now, you know, a lot of the mocks that have come forward have indeed been amazing and stuff like oh, that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, that's probably, like, my favorite part of the contest was just seeing all, like, the cool stuff that people came up with. Like, even if it's not something I would vote for as, like, an appearance of a character, you know you can definitely kind of appreciate the, you know, the ideas that people come up with. And it's definitely fun to see. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like, especially like now, like there's a lot of people who, um, you know, have been working on entries for the canon contest who now have just, you know, started posting them um, since, you know, there's no reason to really Keep not them anymore, post yeah. them. Uh, yeah, exactly. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the idea was if the canon contest worked and continue, Tuya was next, correct? Yeah, Tuya was up next. And, and then, like you guys are saying, you know, that I've been seeing a lot of Tuya mocks lately, and yes, indeed, a lot of them have been amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there's, like, other mocks that people have been working on, too, for, like, you know, Nadiki and Lariska, Mirindar and all of them, right? And, um, you know, those all look really cool, too. And I do kind of feel bad for some of the people who, you know, have invested so much into these contests because... You know, like, a lot of people have gone out to, like, buy parts on Bricklink or, you know, do whatever to, um, you know, make these builds that they were going to enter into the contest. And now, you know, beyond the, the vanity of just having, like, a cool model, they um, don't really have a use for the models anymore, right? You know, I'm sure that that was a big disappointment for them. And, uh, yeah, that's definitely kind of sad to see. But, um, yeah. Well, my reaction for the ending of canonization contests can be summed up with three words. Oh, no! Anyways. <laughs> yeah, like... It was... Like, when I when I, like when I first saw that, right? Like, my, um... I guess, like, introduction to that news was just this, like, random, like, Discord sh- screenshot of, uh... Meso from TTV saying, like, you know, they're over, <laughs> right? And, um, you know, that kind of, it was kind of surreal in a way, right? Like, I wasn't really into, like, the canon contest, and, like, I was kind of someone who thought that they should probably be be done with, right? And to, like, actually see that happen was kind of strange in a way, because... It's like, I won, but at what cost? 
yeah mm-hmm. it's like you know i never actually like expected that to like happen really and to see it actually happen was like huh, oh okay <laughs> yeah it's a hmm that definitely was i mean uh, again this the idea i w- implied it right away as soon as i heard greg was left lego so you know that's where i'm like well no more canon contests and well i have been a fan of the canon contests and it's it's one of those things where i just can't help but feel like like we were kind of talking about before where people you know especially during the artaka contest given that the prerequisite for the artaka uh contest was the idea is this had to be a titan size mock so of course it's mm-hmm. it wasn't just investing in a few pieces here and there you had to get a lot <laughs> in order oh, yeah. to make a good artaka and you know sure where you know wcp's mock was the winner and stuff like that and a fantastic mock in of itself now i know a number of people at this point have you know they're reinvesting in the idea that it's just like okay if i want to make canon artaka now i need a bunch of these sand green pieces <whistles> up went those prices yeah same thing happened with the uh the recent haga contest right the um the canon bomunga model uses five black metro torsos in its design so like yes. <laughs> you know the price of those is just skyrocketed on bricklink from mm-hmm. what i've heard and well, um it did. yeah that's that's <laughs> definitely a downside of the canon contest it's just you know the effect they have on like the whole uh market for bonacle pieces mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. You know, so I guess that's kind of a silver lining to all this. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Like, for me, my main criticism of the contest is just, you know, I wasn't really a fan of, like, how competitive they were, right? Like, the whole purpose of the contest kind of was to bring the community together. But I think oftentimes it just created more divisiveness between members of the community rather than, you know, you really... Uh, yeah, because, yeah. you know, oh, I, don't, I like who won, but I would have preferred if this one won, and then all that, and it creates a division, which doesn't sit well with some people. Right. Yeah, well, even even more, like, extreme than that. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, you know, like, as as I'm sure some of you guys know, like, the the winner of the Helrix contest isn't exactly the best person, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, which, yeah. there, there's a lot of controversy that, like, surrounds the contest and stuff both in, like, the way that, like, TTV runs them and also just people's um, discourse around them, right? Mm -hmm. Because everyone, like, over, like, the past 10 years, like, everyone has just developed their own ideas of what these characters are like. And I think now that people are, like, finally deciding what these characters are looking like, it can kind of be, um, you know, like, it's kind of a blow to their own headcanon of, you know, what these characters are supposed to be like, right? And I think that kind of just breeds a lot of animosity. Yeah, definitely. So, I guess our final um, point of discussion for this podcast is going to be um, the future of the canon contests. So, the official canon contests that involve Greg and TTV, those are over, basically. Yeah. Um, But the community has kind of come out with their own idea for how to uh, continue them in one form or another and that's through what they're calling fanon contests so um there was a video released by a um i'm not going to call him a bio tuber because he also does you know regular lego stuff too but um a lego youtuber called duck bricks he released a video where he um kind of proposed this idea of having canon contests that don't actually affect the official canon of bonacle Basically, the idea would just be to decide a, um, you know, kind of a community consensus, right, mm-hmm. for what a certain character looks like, right? Like, mm-hmm. you you can look at this representation of, you know, whoever, say, like, two yet, right, and say that's, like, the popular community-accepted appearance of that character, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is actually a pretty cool idea because... It kind of it kind of solves a lot of the issues with the um, you know the original canon contest because you know at that point you're not actually competing with people for like that canon seal of approval. By then you're kind of just competing for fun, I think. So there's a lot less at stake, and I think 
hopefully there will be a lot less toxicity if um that idea actually goes through mm -hmm. but um yeah what, what are your guys' thoughts on that idea 100 percent stand behind it because for the reasons you've just mentioned you know hopefully a lot less toxicity and you know less competitive for the sense it's not going to be official canon more of, you know community head canon that a vast number of people can be like yep this this mm -hmm. this aligned with what i thought and I actually like this change here and there and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. I'm not really yeah, on... I think it's a good... Oh, sorry, it's off, you go. Yeah, I'm not really on board with the whole head cannon idea because at, the, at that point, I think it's just another normal mock contest without uh, Greg and the whole canonicity thing. Then I just don't really see the point of making like fanon contests. Like... Yeah. Like, like, at that point, I think it's just, like, a community thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, fair enough. Not, like, yeah, you're right. It doesn't actually, like, impact anything in the grand scheme of the story and whatever. But, um... And I, and I don't... Yeah, like... And I don't, you know... Uh, you know, disagree with people who don't like the... Think this is a... You know, don't think this is a bad idea because... I think we mentioned even during the canonization contest in of itself that it's, it limits creativity, which... Hello, well, it's, like, all about creativity. So, you know, it's, there's definitely a double-edged sword there, and, well, I definitely see both edges, <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think this is, like, I think the fan and contests are kind of a good compromise, because, you know, you can kind of make both sides happy to, like, some extent. Like, for the people who want to still, like, be creative with their own designs for the characters, they can still do that, because there isn't, like... You know, like, this one mock that's, like, on this pedestal is, like, the canon one, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. then, you know, you also have the people who kind of want to have an official model for a character, and they can sort of just look to, like, the head canon one and consider that that way. You know, so I think that's a good middle ground between the two, uh, the two sides of the argument. Hmm. Yeah, so... Let's see. Yeah, so, you know, I think it's still going to be a while until these fanning contests, like, actually start, um, you know, happening, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, like, we'll, we'll have to see, like, how they actually, like, play out. I It's been a while since the last time I watched the Duck Brooks video, but um, I know he opened a Discord recently. I'm a member on there. And, um... I, I believe he's debating on whether, um, you know, he's going to, like, host the contest on his Discord or maybe have some, you know, some other, like, website that he hosts them on, right? Mm -hmm. um, perhaps, like, Mask of Destiny or something would be where the contests get hosted from now on. Um, so, yeah. I think, I don't know, my, my kind of final thought on this is, like, while the canon contests are gone... Um, I think, uh, you know, they can still continue on in some form. So yeah. I don't think there's really much the community needs to worry about at this point. I think we're, I think we'll <laughs> get through this. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Anything else you guys want to add? No, I can't really think much of anything to add. Yeah. No, I think it's pretty much well summed up there. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, I think um, that's going to be the end of the fourth SOK podcast. Um, one thing I would like to mention is, um, you know, we're trying to release these podcast episodes more frequently uh, this year. So, you know, if you guys have any topics you'd like to see us discuss, please leave those in the comment section. Uh, one negative side effect of this recent news is a lot of our podcast topic ideas have kind of been canned since um you know there's no more canon contests um potentially we could do podcast topics like you know discussing the fan in contests if um you know once those actually start happening but um yeah we're we're kind of in a need for topics to discuss right now so if you guys have any suggestions please leave those below in the comment section um as always if you enjoyed please sure to give the video um, a like and subscribe to the channel. 
um, we're almost to 100 subs, so, you know, your support would be greatly appreciated, and, yeah, um, thank you everyone for watching the fourth SOK podcast, and, yeah. Yeah, as a, as a quick side note to other topics, uh, we would also, considering maybe talking about other things more than just Barnacle, like other things we are interested in do, so, you know, we would like to hear your opinions on that as well. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, we're, th- we're also thinking of doing podcast topics for, like, games we like or, you know, different hobbies we also have in addition to Barnacle. So, you know, like Lebo said, if you guys would be interested in that, like, perhaps say Halo podcast or something, since, you know, we have done other, like, Halo-related po- or Halo-related videos before, right? Um, you know, if that's something you guys would want to see, let us know. And, yeah. Um, Sparta Toff, anything else you guys want to want to add? Nope. Nope. All right. All right. Well, I think we can end it there. Thanks for watching, everyone. And this is the SOK signing off.